Oh boy, it's not looking good for React. It was just last week that the React team disclosed a critical security vulnerability in React server components. But then just yesterday, the security research found two additional security vulnerabilities while attempting to exploit the patches in last week's critical vulnerability. This affected Next.js, React Router, the Wheat RSC plugin, Redwood SDK, or rather anyone that uses React server components. So before we dive into each one of the vulnerabilities to understand truly what really happened, make sure to update your application as soon as possible using the link in the description below as it points to the official React docs for how you could upgrade your application depending on the version you're at, the framework you're using, and so on. So let's dive in. So let's say a user clicks a button, and that specific button is a submit button inside some form that allows you to create a product. The fact that you're creating a product means that we need some sort of a mutation. For that, if you're using a framework like Next.js or if you're using React directly, which Next.js internally uses, then you would expose something called as a server function, also known as server action. This is how it would look like. This is a function. The fact that you add a use server directive at the top of the file or at the top of the function would expose that function as a HTTP endpoint. So you can call it, this is a syntactic sugar over here. Instead of creating a separate API request, you can just simply export a function with use server directive at the top of the file. Here's what's happening inside the function. We create a product, product gets passed as a parameter, you're checking if the user is valid, if the user is even allowed to create a product. If so, then we are inserting the product into the database. Now, this is just straightforward server action code. There's nothing abnormal here. It's nothing special here. We are preventing the server action from being called. The fact that we have this check for the user. Now, obviously, there could be more code here that I could add to make it even more secure. But let's stick to this for now. Now, Calling a server action does not actually call the function. When you call a server action and await the specific function, for example, await create product, it doesn't directly call the function. Here is what happens, what React does. React turns that interaction into a HTTP request. At this point, we have entered the network world. We're no longer in the JavaScript land. And that's exactly where server actions are locked. They keep exposed the HTTP endpoint by simply just creating a function here. So when the request hits the server, React does three things. First, it tries to decode the request. Second, it calls a server function. And third, it encodes the result and sends it back to the client. Now, all three security vulnerabilities happen in these steps, in the Re React decode step and in the React encode step. So let's take a look at the first one. So critical security vulnerability in React server components, there was an unauthenticated remote execution vulnerability. Now, the first one being discovered happened during the decoding step. A malicious user could trick React into executing code before your function even runs. This happens before authentication checks, before validation, before your code. And this is taken care of. If you have updated your app last week, then you're good here. And again, there's more information here. The vulnerability is in fact present in these three packages, React Server DOM, Webpack, Parcel, and TurboPack, or all the React Server DOM packages. The second one that happened yesterday is called denial of service. Now, first of all, a denial of service attack is when someone in intentionally prevents legitimate users from accessing your application. So denial of service also happened here. It's in fact in the decoding the request phase. Certain requests could cause React to get stuck in an infinite loop while decoding. As a result, it hangs the server. So the users of your application are no longer able to access that specific information or create a product in this case because your function never gets called react will get stuck in an infinite loop the server is just going to freeze and an analogy here would be like imagine you're in a coffee shop normally you're standing in line trying to wait waiting to order but let's say a malicious user just walks in and stands in front of you cuts the line it's not letting anyone order coffee is standing in front of the register blocking everyone else they never order they never move and the shop also did not get robbed yet because they're just blocking other people from accessing it or from ordering coffee. So no one else can be served either. So this is what denial of service attack does. Denial of service attack doesn't break into your application, but it prevents your app from working at all. And this creates a vulnerability vector where an attacker may be able to deny users from accessing the product and potentially have a performance impact on the server environment. Now, the patches published mitigate preventing this infinite loop. And the third one is called as a source code exposure, for example. So if you take a look, this is a medium severity that a security researcher has discovered 
that a malicious HTTP request sent to the vulnerable server function may unsafely return the source code of any server function. So the source code exposure thing happened during encoding. In some cases, React would accidentally stringify and return the server function's source code in response. Now this is just really bad. So here's what happens. So this is the server function, for example, Exploitation requires the existence of a server function which explicitly or implicitly exposes a stringified argument. So let's say this is a server function. Implicitly stringify, it's leaked in the DB. An attacker may be able to leak the following. So this literally includes your entire information. Now because this fu server function is exposed, if you are using hard-coded environment variables here, for example, your API key or something that clearly deserves to be in environment variables and not in inside your code, then you're exposed. Yeah, that's a big problem right there. So secrets in the code may be exposed. Secrets hard-coded in source code may be exposed, but runtime secrets such as process.n.environment variable are not exposed. Scope of this is only limited to the code inside the server function, which may include other functions depending on the amount of inlining a bundle provides. Now, this is again really horrible. So again, make sure to upgrade your application. Now, if I were you, I know that React has specifically mentioned specific patches. Let's say you're not using server components or you're not using server actions even, but you're using React, I would still upgrade. I would make sure that I'm, I'm not sure what else might be uncovered in the future. This definitely shakes my trust a little bit. So make sure to upgrade your application following the guide here that I've linked in the description below. So here's what that means. Server actions are not just functions that are, they are public HTTP endpoints and these vulnerabilities lived in the layer that translates HTTP code into JavaScript code. The translation layer is what broke, not just specific code. However, if you have followed best sec security best practices, such as not exposing your environment variables or hard coding it, putting your API key in your code and all of that, then obviously you won't be exposed. However, if you did do that, then this is definitely really important for you that you upgrade. Now, if you are using Next.js, do not manually upgrade React, upgrade Next.js instead. The React team is also working with individual frameworks to make sure that there is this proper fix there. And if you are on a Canary release, check the React block carefully. Some Canaries were affected and required downgrading instead. And if you updated last week, make sure you update again, because like I mentioned, there were three security vulnerabilities. One that was discovered about a week ago and two more discovered just yesterday. Now this does not mean that React server components are truly unsafe, but it does mean that they are a powerful infrastructure and deserve the same scrutiny as any other backend system. So treat these server actions as simple backend API calls. Follow the same practices as you would for any other backend code that you're writing. Make sure to not store hardcore environment variables. Make sure to follow the security practices to truly understand how to prevent yourself from a vulnerability like this one. But again, the translation layer is what broke. Like I mentioned, this specific layer not your code specifically, but your, as a result, your code is impacted and exposed. So I hope this was helpful. If there's one takeaway from this entire video, make sure you update your app if you're using React server components or server functions, for example. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this specific video. It was a plan to create more content just like this and drop a video every single day until Christmas. So it's going to be a lot of fun. As next steps, if you are interested in leveling up your React skills, then definitely check out this Next.js 16 completely free crash course that will help you level up your Next.js skills. It's completely free. It's five hours long, but truly worth it. Let that be your course to help you level up your Next.js skills. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.